So uh, my name is Shiri Cabral. Um, I'm talking about the finer art of being a senior citizen admin. And there were a couple of blog posts that happened um, kind of in the fall when uh, LinuxConf submissions were going in and I was like, this would be a great topic because it seemed to be on everyone's mind. Now one of the things, who here has senior in front of their title? You could see, I do. Okay, so uh, some of you. Um, and I won't ask if you think you deserve it or whatever. Who wants to be a senior? Okay, that's good. Everyone's like, I like my job. I don't want any more responsibilities. That's great. One thing about being senior is, you know, being senior should not be just a length of time. Because what is it going to be? Five years? Ten years? You know, let's say it's ten years, right? That's a long time to be working in one discipline. Sure. You know, ten years, you're, you're out of college and whatever, or maybe you didn't go to college, and, you know, now you're 30, and, you know, you know a lot. But, you know, if you're going to be working until you're 60, what comes after senior? Right? Like, are you senior plus plus? Are you like really awesome senior? Are you super? What, well, how does that work? So just basing on the length of time is not necessarily the best idea. Now, experience is a requirement and you need time to get experience. So, you know, it's not the only requirement is time, but it's hard when you see someone who has, you know, 10 years of experience on their resume. I've had this problem. I, I was once working with a bunch of developers and one of them was like, well, I have 10 years of experience. What do you mean I have to commit to a code repository? I know what I'm doing. And I was like, um, Really? And I tried to explain to him, and he was like, he's like, no, 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 but I know what I'm doing. I'm like, mm, okay. Um, so one of the things I think that's um, really important is that this slide should not actually be in this location. And we'll talk about this <laughs> a little later. Um, so this brings us actually to the first blog post that happened. It was by Tom Mincelli of Google, um, who is, he, he literally wrote the book, The Practice of System and Network Architecture, co-wrote it with Christine Hogan. Um, and he had this very short blog post, and it was really awesome, and it really got me starting to think about this topic, what makes you senior? Now he said, so here's the blog post. You can get the slides later. It's at bit.ly slash senior SA, SA in capital letters. You can download them actually now. They're online now if you really want them. Um, so a senior person understands the internal workings of the systems he or she administers. I think everyone's pretty much, yeah, you got to know what's going on. And debugs issues from place of science, not guessing or rote memorization. Now this, when I say guessing, I also mean like, you don't say, oh, okay, well, things are really slow, so maybe it's a disk issue. Okay, that's good. And then you're like, so let's, um, let's look at some disk stuff. Okay, well, let's just see if we turn this off, if things will go faster. That, now you're getting into guessing. You know, um, or maybe if we do this, things will go faster. That's starting to get into guessing. You really have to get into the science, and that's where we come to the slide: the battle of any against any guess, which I will move to the right place now. Battle against any guess.com was actually a um, a movement against this. So instead of having people go and Google, um, you know, what it is, and oh well, other people had this problem, and here's how they solved it, and so let me Google it and do whatever people on Google said to do. Um, that's, that's guessing, right? I mean, it might be a good guess and it might work, but that's not what a senior person does. That's what a more junior person uh, would do. So now that the slide is in the right place, um, we can continue. I'm a little OCD about this kind of stuff. Um, well, because when I, I want you guys to have the good slides when I save it all at lunch, I'm going to put it up right away. Um, so here we go. Not a place of rote memory. It's still not in the quite right place, huh? A senior, so that was number one. Number two, and he started numbering his list with one, and we'll forgive him for that. Um, number two was a senior person has enough experience to know a problem solution because he or she has seen it and fixed it before, but is smart enough to check that assumption since superficial symptoms can be deceiving. I can't tell you how many times, now I have this like magic ability. People, people are really amazed. So I'll go in somewhere, um, when I used to do consulting, right? And they'll be, and they'll, like, things will be really slow. And they'll have two systems, and one of them's really slow, and one of them's not. And it's database stuff, right? So you're reading, you're writing your memory, whatever. You're looking, the CPU's the same. You know, the load is a little bit higher on the machine. That's a little bit slower. That makes sense. You know, and one time this happened, and, you know, we debugged it for like two hours. We couldn't figure it out. Ended up being one of the RAID disks was dead. Makes a lot of sense, right? They weren't monitoring or whatever, but makes a ton of sense because now every write is slower. You know, the, the reads are, might be slower, but probably aren't. But every single write was, you know, ten, twice as slow or three times as slow. I forget what their RAID configuration was. And so now every time that, that, you know, we get to a thing and you're debugging and your five minute debug mark is like, you're frustrated because you're like, well, I don't know. DB1 is the same as DB2, but DB2 is so slow. My first thought is check the RAID disks, right? Because I've done it before. Um, but I also know to check an assumption. If things aren't slow or if there's millions more queries per second on, on that slow machine, well, maybe that's why. Maybe there's a misconfigured web host that's sending all their 
braiding it properly. A senior person automates their way out of problems, right? We know this, we automate, rather than working harder. They automate themselves out of a job constantly. Why would you want to do that, right? Don't you want to be the guy that like, or the, or the woman that knows everything and people come to you and so you never document anything you do, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> you want the more interesting stuff. I don't want to not document how to do a master-slave failover because there are some tricky points. So, you know, I do have checklists for that kind of stuff. But I don't want to be doing that. That stuff's boring after the first 10 times you do it, right? So I want to, I want to document it and automate it, if I can, so that I can do more interesting things. So think about it that way. So now I said, uh, I said automate and document, right? So here you document yourself. This is kind of my natural corollary. And actually, Tom goes on, that was his three bullet points. And then he says, and finally, and he didn't number his last bullet point, um, you know, by creating a process as others can follow, right? So you enable delegation and you multiply your effectiveness, right? You can have a junior person do it because they know enough basic terms. It's not like anyone can just walk off the street and do it. They need to know a little bit. Um, you know, in the database administration field, I've gotten some sysadmins to just be able to do it because it's like, here's the list and here's what you need to know. So again, what's better, knowing a lot or being good yourself and helping others learn too? Because people at my company aren't, aren't just like, hey, Shiri's awesome, she knows what she's doing, but she's like, yeah, and she taught this guy and this guy and this person and that person. So, you know, it's really useful. So how do you do it? Um, you know, you have some internal wikis, you have some checklists. By the way, checklists, checkmarkable.com. Finally, we have this service. It's a free, one of these free online things. Um, it's actually written by, uh, by Jesse, Jesse Vincent and Selena Deckelman was part of it, so it's people who know what they're doing. It's a free uh, checklist templating system, and what you do is you make like a template. So maybe it's like, here's the steps to automate master slave, or here's the steps to do it when you're doing a uh, master slave failover. Um, and what you do is then somebody can instantiate that template and they can save where they are in that template. So if they've only gotten five check checks done in the first day, they can go back and other people can instantiate that so that you're not messing up. You're not trying to or your, uh, your ticket and be like, I'm on step five in the thing, here's what step six is. So that's pretty cool. Um, blog posts, right? You blog, you teach others. Uh, speaking helps teach others. Podcasts, webinars, write a book, teaching, right? Um, there's a lot of really awesome things. Op school is starting to be formed. So this is where people are teaching other people sysadmin stuff in a very practical way. Um, it's awesome, you should check it out. There are some virtual self-study groups, um, PHP Percolate. So basically, they find a book that has exercises in it. They say, we're gonna read chapter one this week, chapter two this week. It's really awesome. Um, they have HTML5 Brunch, jQuery Jam. Um, and I actually was inspired by this and I've started MySQL Marinate. So if you wanna learn MySQL, you can buy a book, not, one I, not the one I wrote, a uh, different book, um, and, and actually it's, an, it's the O'Reilly Learning MySQL book and Learn MySQL, so it's pretty cool. So you, know, you can be the person that helps teach people sysadmin stuff. Um, and keep learning from others, right? I'm not like, I know everything and I'm done. I continue to learn. Um, level up, right? You know, I'm, I'm good at speaking. I, I was, what I wanna do now is I wanna go to like Toastmasters and really learn how to get a good presentation, not with just these bullet points like, I want to be more entertaining, more fun. Um, so let's turn to John Allspaw, speaking about learning from others, right? So you, there's always someone better than you in whatever field. And uh, the second post that I was inspired by was John's. And he was talking about, you know, senior, whatever. He's the one that was like, oh, is senior, um, is senior, like, what do you have, have after senior? Are you like super senior, senior plus plus? How does that work? And he was, he's actually talking about engineers. So he actually said, you know what, let's talk, we can talk about experience, whatever, but you could have 10 years on the job and you know, not be good. So he's, he talks about what he, what he refers to as engineering maturity. So it's not, an, it's not the number, it's not how old you are, it's not how many years you've been doing it, it's how mature you are. Um, and I think that's a, that was amazing. I mean, you know, it's John Oswald, so what do you expect, right? But, um, so here's, here's an interesting question. Can there be engineering maturity in DevOps? The field itself is not mature. That's just food for thought. We can argue about that at lunch. Um, so he refers to this book, Unwritten Law of 44. I have a pen in this book. I started reading it on the plane over here. It's a 69 page book and it's 1495 USD. So there's no excuse for you not to run out and do this. I get no credit for you buying this book, but it's an awesome book. I, this pen was meant to highlight the stuff I found interesting, and I wanted to highlight every single sentence in this book. It's very concise, very good, but like every sentence is pure gold. Um, so it's a good book. 
Mature, so here's what John says. Mature engineers seek out constructive criticism of their designs. This is learning from others, right? Hey, could you poke a hole in this design? What are users gonna do for this? If, you, you know, if you're Facebook, you don't wanna be like, okay, here's how you have to use your product, right? B. Dale was talking about it this morning. You know, don't tell me how I have to use your product. I'm gonna use it how I'm gonna use it. Um, so you want to get that most in the design phase. You, phase. you want to get that early on so you're as flexible as possible. You don't want to be the person who's sitting there going, no, no, nobody's going to use it like that. Forget that. You're wrong. I'm smart. You know, I know what I'm doing. You're always going to learn from others. And I've actually found, especially in teaching people, the people who come, the people who are new to it, I learn the most from. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to people say to have people say yes, and you're a genius. That's a great design, and I love it. Um, but it's not optimal for whatever you're building. Um, and that that goes for code, and it also goes for architecture. So mature engineers, uh, engineers understand the non-technical areas of how they are perceived, right? So it doesn't matter how good you are, right? That's that's the technical part. If nobody wants to work with you, okay? There's the, there's the don't be an a-hole, don't be a douche, don't be a jerk, like. Be someone that people want to work with. You know, that doesn't mean never be grumpy. I mean, my coworkers up there can tell you that, you know, at three in the morning when I get, they're nodding their heads. I, get gr I can get grumpy. And sometimes I'll be like, dude, I'm just grumpy today. I'm cranky. It happens. But don't be, don't be somebody that nobody wants to work with. Um, I don't care how smart you are or how smart you think you are. Um, if nobody wants to work with you, you're going to be working alone and you're not going to be on these really cool collaborative projects. Level up on communication. Critique tech, not people. So, you know, we're all really smart. We're like, oh God, this is really dumb. And I can't believe someone did all this work to like replicate grep in Python and how stupid is that? And, oh my God. Whatever, it's a project. If they had fun doing it, great. If the tech is bad, if the code is bad, you could point that out and be like, okay, obviously this is a new project. And hey, your code's really great. Or hey, you know what? This here, you're using a lot more, you're, you're initializing variables that you never use. It's gonna kill your memory usage. Mature under engineers understand that not all of their projects are filled with rock star on stage work. I worked for a company that had an office of one person in the Boston area. That was me. Okay, I had to order the printer. I had to clear the paper jams. I mean, and you know, it's not just that. Sometimes, you know, you have the commit bit, right? Having the power to accept commits is not some super sexy godlike role. You're the janitor. You are cleaning stuff up. You are looking at their code and being like, is this. Does this you know, apply to the, the rules of code that we have here? Are you using camel case in your things? That's not sexy, okay? But they're not gonna give that job to someone who just joined the project yesterday. So it's not all rock star, it's not all fun and games. It's work, it's finishing your slides the morning of your birthday at, you know, while you're having breakfast before the thing. That's what, that's what it is. See also documentation, who here loves to write documentation? Okay, that's a small percentage, right? Small percentage, maybe, 10% of the audience, right? So 90% of us hate to do documentation. I don't hate to do it, I like the end product, so I kind of hate doing it, but I, I, I know that I want to do it. Mature engineers make their trade-off explicit when making judgments and decisions, okay? So you're like, I know I did, I picked a, this menu bar is gonna go here, or this is the way this functionality is gonna work. You know, we're not gonna allow it to divide by negative numbers because blah, 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 but you make that explicit. And here's the trade-off, and here's the audience that you're going to um, piss off when you do that. Um, that means knowing what your trade-offs are and thinking about what your assumptions are, and that's hard to do. That's where helping get, getting critique from other people is good. When people critique stuff, um, I don't, I'm, I'm never like, hey, no, that's just wrong. Like People are like, yeah, let's put images in the database. And I'm like, okay, let's think about this for a second. So everyone's laughing, right? But you don't know. Maybe they're talking about like 10 images that are 10K each. That's great. Maybe it's really, really important to that application that you have that integrity in the database. If you put the files outside of the database, you delete the row, and then you delete the file, right? That's not happening at the exact same time. That's not consistent. Maybe it's really important. Now, for the most part, yeah, people are talking about, I'm going to put the pictures I take from my camera, that's like two megabytes, and I'm going to have 5,000 pictures, right? That's not so good. But there is a use case. So what I like to try to do is try to say, OK, well, how do, how do you solve this problem? How do you solve the problems that backups are going to be huge and take forever? How do you solve these problems? How do you solve the problem of caching, right? Wouldn't a CDN be better for caching images, things like that? And then in the 95% of the time, we're like, you know, yeah, it was a dumb idea. They're like, oh. Oh great, thanks, I learned something, you know, you're right about those things. And then the 5% of the time where, no, that's the actual case, they can actually point it out to me and I don't look like a jerk. Uh, mature engineers know the importance of feelings people have, okay? If people use the software and they're really, really into it, 
they have feelings about it. Even sometimes they're irrational. But it's still, they're still important, even though they're irrational. So Allspire's article is worth reading. It ends with the Ten Commandments of Eagle as Programming. Um, and I want to end with the Peter Principle and the myth of the corporate ladder. So the Peter Principle is, if you're really good at your job, you get promoted. If you're really good at that job, you get promoted. You get promoted until you stop being good at your job. It makes sense, right? But how many of us kind of do that? So in the myth of the corporate ladder, right? We, we're like, oh, I want to do this, and I want to make tons of money, and I want to be famous, and I want to do this. And, and the only way to do that is to be like a VP of engineering. So like, I have to go up and like, have to go from regular to senior to manager to, to director to VP. You know, be where you want to be, OK? You, when you get to a certain point, like I'm at the point I want to be. I don't want my boss's job. There's too many meetings. There's too much paperwork. There's not enough hands in the stuff, OK? Some people love that. That's great. But know that the higher up you go, the farther away you're getting from your code. So think about where you want to be, and don't contribute to the problem. If somebody's like, hey, I want to make you a manager, think about that. Do you want to be the manager, or do you just want like the raise and the praise? Right? If you want the raise and the praise, talk to your boss and be like, you know what? I want the raise and the praise. Let's change my, let's, let's you know, give me the salary, you know, or whatever, if you can. <laughs> if you can. I wouldn't, I would advise saying it like that, but you know. <laughs> You know, say, start out and say, look, I appreciate that, that you, you know, acknowledge that I'm doing a great job, but I'd like to continue to do this job. So that's about it. If there's any feedback, let me know. We have like one minute left. We've got the, t the lunch right now, though. So I'm happy to get any feedback. Um, if we go back to the original slide, you can find tons of ways to, uh, to contact me. I'm at Shiri on Twitter, I, and Shiri.com is my, uh, my blog. Um, you could probably find my email address if you look hard enough. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you.